Hello and welcome to this video where I will show you how you use the security option inside Ransom Blazor Studio. So first of all, let's go and create a new project and we're just going to create a Blazor server application. So let's hit next and let's just call our project for security app and we will use the .NET 7 framework and we can just use the material theme. And in the directory, I have created a folder on my desktop called security app. So I'll just use that folder and let's hit finish. So the first thing we will do is to actually connect to a database, because if you click on the security and we're going to use the ASP.NET Core identity framework to handle our users and the login. So if we hit next, you can see that there was no databases found in the application and we actually need that to get started with the security option. And the reason for that is because the identity framework will add some tables inside our database to store the users and just in general to be able to handle all the login stuff that identity will do. So I'll just hit cancel on this one and then we will just open the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. But this is of course only if you want to use MS SQL as your database, you can use whatever database technology that you want. But in this video, I would use MS SQL in the server management studio. So this is actually our server name. So we will go and copy this. And then I want to say connect. And then if I go to the databases, the system databases and click on the master database, I will go and expand the tables. And as you can see, I already have some article and tags uh, tables. And because I already tested this, I also have this migration, which I actually should just delete. But else it is actually important that you have a table that you can use to set up the database inside Rats and Blazor Studio. So now I'll just go back to Rats and Blazor Studio and open the data tab and then say next to the MS SQL. And then in here, I want to paste the server name. And I want to choose the authentication type to be Windows and the database was called master. And let's go and hit next. So now, as you can see, if I tap this tables off, you need to have at least one entity before you can click next. And that was the reason why you just need to have one table inside your database so that you can scaffold at least one entity from the database. So I'll just take the articles table and then hit next. And I don't want to generate any pages for the crowd operations. So I'll just hit next again. And now when that's done, I can go and expand the project, see the models. And inside the master, I have my articles model. And it's not the, that I have to use this in this project. It's just to show that we do now have a connection. So if I go to security and choose ASP.NET Core Identity, we can see that we now have a database called master. And this is now the database that identity will fill up with a lot of tables now to handle all the login information and the users that are going to use the system. And in my case, I actually also want to allow user to registrate and I also want to allow them to reset their password. But these options, of course, require that you have a mail server that you can use. And because I already have a mail server, I want to use that one. So in my case, it's smtp.simply.com because I use the mail server from Simply. But you, of course, need to put your own hosting service provider inside the email server and find out what they have. And in my case, the port is OK. And I want to use the SSL. And then the email user will be Ransom Blazor Studio and then setbit.tech. That's just a email I just created for this purpose. And then I just filled in a password for this email. There was one thing that you need to be careful of because I was trying to use the MailTrap email server, but I don't think identity will allow that a email should look like this, for example. And inside MailTrap, you get a user email just like this, just a string without it's actually being a email. So you should actually set a real email address in this email user. And if you don't do this, you just need to go in to the code that identity generates and fix it up by yourself. But I'm not going to show that in this video. So for now, I'll just click finish. And now it will add all the tables to our database. 
And it, of course, also set up a lot of UI and functionality inside our Ratson Blazor Studio app. So if we run this now, we get this view where we have to log in before we can see the actual website. So what we will do now is to sign up a new account and make that account a administrator in our system. And then we want to create another account after that, where that the other account should not be able to have the administrator options or actually a role. We're going to put roles on the different accounts. But first of all, let's go and open the database again. So we can see now that if we update this one, we say refresh and open the tables. We now have a lot of identity tables. And just to show an example, we have this ASP net users. If we right click and say select top thousand rows, we get all the columns that is inside this table. So for example, we have a email here and we need to confirm the email also when we have created the user and then it will hash the password and put it in here. And it also have a username here at last. But let's go back to our website because everything should work now. If we sign up and I want to use my private email for this and I want to specify a password that actually fulfill the requirements for the password because identity have some requirements. So I'll just type it again here and let's say register. And now you can see registration accepted. Please check your email for further instructions. And as we can see now, I actually got an email from Rats and Blazers Studio and then my own domain. So if I click this, then I receive this mail where it says, please confirm your registration. So if we click on this one, it now says your registration has been confirmed. And now we're able to log into our website. So I'll just type my credentials. And now when we log in, then we can see that we're actually logged in up here. And now we can see the users in the system and the roles. So if we go to users, we can see that the only user is the one we just created. And if we click on this one, we can actually add roles to the user but we have not created any roles yet, uh, but we will do that. You can also change the password in here, but for now I'll just say cancel and go to the roles page. And of course, if we create a new user again right now, it, it could do all the same things like creating some new users and creating roles. And that's what we are going to stop right now. And the way we do that is that we're going to add a role and we will call this administrator and say save. So now we have a administrator role in our system. Then we want to go to the users and put the role on our own account. So I'll just tap that off and then say save. So now we have a administrator role inside our system. And the only user that have this role is our newly created user. So if we close the application and go back to Rats and Blazer Studio, we can now go to the pages. And if we go to the applications users, we come to this page where we could see all the users that is inside our system. And first of all, it is set to authenticate it. And that's just because we actually have a user now that can go into the page. But as soon as you are authenticated, you have fully access to this page and we don't want to do that. So now we can expand the roles and say that it's only administrators that can be on this page. And we will also set the role as administrator on some other pages like this add application role and add application user and application roles and edit application user so i'll just do that so now that i have set the administrator roles on the different pages let's go and run the application again and then we want to sign up a new account so i'll just create a second account so the second account is going to be my contact email and then I want to register again. And after a few seconds, I should get an email. So I actually received the email now and it said, please confirm your registration. So we will do that for this user. And then we want to log in as the contact user. So let's log in. And now, as you can see, we actually get all the same items in our menu here. But when we click on users, we get this unauthorized because this account do not have the administrator role and the same would goes for the roles page but we could argue that 
These items in the menu should not even be visible for this user. So to do that, we go inside Rats and Blazes Studio again. I'll just close this project again, close my mail. And in our Explorer, let's roll down to the Shards folder and open the main layout. And then we want to split this view so we also get some code. And if we scroll a bit down, we actually get the menu right here. And as you can see, the menu is only visible when you are authenticated. And that's, that's just me that you're logged in. Then it will display all this. But what we will do is to actually click on this Ratson profile menu. And then we get all the items inside the menu over here. And if we click the users, then we can see all the properties that we can edit. And the visible properties is what we're going to change. Of course, we want to have it visible, so that's fine. But we actually want to use this bind to data. And then we want to create an expression up here where we're going to say that the item should only be visible if it is a administrator role. And I'll just copy and paste that code. So you can see security is in role and then administrator. And if this turn out to be true, then it will show the item in the menu. And if it's false, it will make the item invisible. But when we hit OK, we actually get a small error because we need to make these just single quotes, just like this. And then everything should work properly. And you cannot add single quotes to this string. And I don't know why, but it gives an error. And I think that is a C sharp thing. But what we can do now is to actually copy and paste this to the rules also. And if we go and stop the application and run it again, then we can log in. And I'll just log in as our contact user. So I'll say login. And if we go to the menu now, you can see that it is gone because we don't have the administrator role. And if we sign out and log in as our administrator role, and let's log in, then we can now see up in the menu, still have the users and the roles. And if we click them, it also works. And of course, if we copy and paste the URL and we log out and we paste it in here, it will just go to this login page because you need to be authenticated. But I think this is a good place to stop. And I hope you enjoyed the video where you just got a short introduction to how the security option in Rats and Blazer Studio works by using the ASP.NET Core Identity Framework. But else, just have a nice day. Bye.